Coming up on this week in Torrance, Torrance Rose Float volunteers are hard at work leading up to the big day. We'll take you behind the scenes. Then famous surfer Alex Gray stops by a local high school to share his family's tragic story of addiction and loss. Plus, an event brings together families who have one common tie. And we'll introduce you to the latest member of the Torrance family. These stories and much more are just seconds away. Your local news starts right now. Hello and welcome to This Week in Torrance. I'm Jin Chun. And I'm Ben McCain. Thanks so much for joining us. Here are your top stories. How to regulate short-term housing was one of the hot topics at the recent city council meeting. Council members unanimously approved staff's recommendations to adopt an ordinance that will amend the Torrance Code to accommodate changes for short-term rentals citywide. The ordinance would allow short-term rentals in residential uses within commercial zones and home share short-term rentals in residential zones. The ordinance modified language regarding insurance. They also eliminated the proposed ordinance minimum requirement from a one-night stay to two nights. They also added that any time short-term rentals change ownership, a new application is required. Many residents who host Airbnb spoke and said the ordinance originally was too restricted and it would be hard to enforce. Some talked about how it helps them financially as well. Most council members say homeowners should have the option of how many days a person can stay. It's an alternative, uh, I think, to hotel stays, as we said at the outset. Uh, and it is a new gig economy. It's something that we have to get ready for. And eventually, maybe even scooters will be here and bikes, too. But uh, I think we have to take small steps and uh, approve it to allow people to use short-term rentals in our city. But we have to be able to have our thumb on them to make sure that uh, they're not problematic. Staff says there are nearly 300 short-term rentals in the city of Torrance. The Torrance Refining Company LLC is hosting a community meeting to keep residents informed about the steps they're taking for the Torrance Air Quality Monitoring Project. Now, this takes place on Wednesday, December 18th at North High School's library in Torrance from 6 to 8 p.m. They will provide an update on the Torrance Refinery's fence line air monitoring system that will be implemented January 2020 in compliance with South Coast AQMD Rule 1180. Now, the Torrance Refinery fence line air monitoring system is intended to inform the public as well as refinery operators about the impacts of air pollutants resulting from refinery operations on the surrounding communities. Communities. The monitors installed along the north fence line of the Torrance Refinery rely on open path measurements, a technology that uses varying frequencies of light to measure the concentrations of harmful air pollutants. Along with the refinery monitors, there are four other air quality monitors located throughout the community. As part of the Torrance Air Quality Monitoring Project, TorrenceAir.org was launched where residents can get near real-time information about air pollutant concentrations. The project is sponsored by the South Coast Air Quality Management District. The website is torrensair.org. The Volunteer Center South Bay celebrated a new partnership recently. Staff announced they are now a Casa Herbal Life partner. They celebrated the new partnership and food for kids program grant with team members from Herbal Life and the Herbal Life Nutrition Foundation. They demonstrated the various ways the center makes an impact on the local community through the food for kids program. President and CEO Sarah Myers talked about empathy with families from Believer's Victory International Church. Families from the church also held a food drive. The Casa Herbal Life Nutrition Program provides children with the nourishment, care, and education they need to thrive. Funds go toward food subsidies, nutrition education, and other projects to improve the health of children around the world. We know helpful Honda guys are always out and about lending a helpful hand, but this year they gave back in a new way. For the first time ever, the helpful Honda guys hosted random trees of helpfulness across Southern California. A big blue tree or trees were placed in public locations. People were able to write their wishes on an ornament and then hung it on the tree. More than 100 lucky SoCal residents were selected at random and surprised. The trees were located in Torrance, Ontario, Camarillo and Anaheim through December 8th. The Torrance location was in front of Uniqlo at the Delamo Fashion Center. Make sure to follow 
SoCal Honda dealers on Facebook to follow where they go next. The city of Torrance welcomes its new city librarian. Yolande Wilburn moved back home to the South Bay from Nevada, where she worked as the county librarian for Nevada County Community Library for four years. She overlooked six libraries, two service locations, and a mobile technology van. She has a strong background in project management, strategic planning, and budgeting. Her first professional library position was with Chicago Public Library, working in the areas of outreach, programming, reference, and reader's advisory services to children, teens, and adults at the various locations within the library system. Wilburn says she is hoping to expand library hours and meet the community's needs. She is looking forward to this new chapter. One of the things that I've learned in my travels is it's always great to meet new people, discover new things, and so that's really exciting for me. I love meeting new people, um, getting to know them, getting to understand what their needs are, and seeing how I can help to meet those needs. So I'm really looking forward to getting to know everyone here in the community. Welcome, Yolan. The city of Torrance currently has six libraries. The Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce had some special international visitors recently. Sixteen delegates from the Shangzi province in China were hosted by the chamber, along with eight students from Ambassador and Bishop Montgomery High Schools. Chamber President and CEO Donna Dupron shared with visitors about the chamber's mission and their involvement in the community. O'Brien and Fong LLP and Roger Evans from Doubletree Hilton talked about how the chamber helps businesses in the community grow. Mayor Patrick Fury highlighted the benefits residents and owners have through the partnership with the Chamber and the City. Office of California Senator Ben Allen presented certificates to them as well. Chamber officials say the event showcased their Chamber's mission to foster professional relationships, whether it's local or on the global level. You can learn more at TorrenceChamber.com. The Torrance Art Museum is closing out the year with special exhibitions. The main gallery is hosting Adjacent Adjacent a culminating exhibition of Forum 2019, a 10-month mentorship program with a cohort of 14 art professionals. Gallery 2 is called Plaza Mirage 2, featuring brand new works by artists Zach Trow and Teresa Sterner. The Dark Room features a series of video and document clips related to the Forum 2019 events. Forum is an annual 10-month mentorship residency for emerging artists, curators, gallerists, and writers who wish to build a career in contemporary art. The Torrance Art Museum is a program for the Cultural Services Division of the Community Services Department. The exhibition is open now through the 21st. Information about the program and applications for Forum 2020 are now available at torrenceartmuseum.com forum. Well, you won't have to travel far to enjoy the holidays, especially with all of the events happening across town. On December 20th, the Torrance South Bay YMCA is hosting its WISE Senior Holiday Luncheon from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Tickets are available at the senior office. Then there is a Nutcracker performance on December 22nd from 7 to 10 p.m. at the James Armstrong Theater. Tickets are on sale now. Then Delamo Fashion Center is also having its SoCal Etsy Guild Market on that day where people can shop handmade goods, experience live art, food, and giveaways. And the Doubletree Torrance South Bay is hosting its Christmas brunch on December 25th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. You will be able to enjoy live music, a carving station, and many other Christmas-themed activities. Well, still ahead, Wilson Park turns into a holiday shopping extravaganza. Plus, we'll take you to the city of Irwindale, where Torrance float decorators are working tirelessly for that big day. My name is Hunter Hayes, and I know my buzzed warning signs. One shot is about knowing my limits, or not necessarily knowing my limits. I start with one shot to have a good time. Everybody knows how easy one can turn into five. I think a sign that I'm buzzed is when I start solving not only my own problems, but the entire world's problems. When I know I'm going out, I know I'm going to start with calling for a ride. One shot at a time. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Cut. Yeah. No, that was great. So. You sure? You guys happy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's great. Easy day, man. Thank you so much. Totally, yeah. I really uh, appreciate it. Do you want us to sign your guitar? No. I mean, we no, we we'll totally do. We'll yeah, sign it's fine. It. We'll be, we'd be happy. Sorry, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta roll. Good to see you guys. Thanks. 
you should have asked for his signature. For more than 100 years, Torrance has celebrated the new year with a float and the Tournament of Roses parade. While creating the float is a year-long process, the intensity really starts to build in December. Torrance City Cable reporter Colleen Farrell visited the Fiesta Parade Floats facility in Irwindale, where the city's 2020 float is starting to take shape. You could say that Fiesta Parade Floats is to New Year's Day what Santa's workshop is to Christmas. I'm not punching out the same Ford Mustang every year. While Santa, a.k.a. Tim Estes, is busy overseeing the design and construction of the floats, the decorating is where the elves come in. In late November, volunteers begin trimming thousands of dried flower petals. After Christmas, each petal will be glued one by one to the float that now looks like this. It's a lot of work, you know, trying to separate the purple from the white and stuff, but yeah, it's good. I brought the right pair of scissors. It's not the glamour work that everyone wants to be doing, but it, it's the important work. Important to ensure that this year's float, named our Garden of Hopes and Dreams, does justice to what it's meant to depict. This year, it's the city's tranquil gem known as the Pine Wind Garden, an authentic Japanese landscape that features two waterfalls, a koi pond, and stone pathways. It's a place where people can go to contemplate, to dream, uh, you know, to think about the direction of their life. And so we think that's a good message of hope and follows the parade theme. The Power of Hope float will feature more than 20,000 of these rose vials. 200 of them have been purchased so far and dedicated to individuals or families as one of the Rose Float Association's <laughs> primary fundraisers. A float in the most watched parade in the world doesn't come free, but it's a labor of love the city and hundreds of volunteers recognize as important year after year. Whether it's like a small koi fish or a turtle or anything, somebody comes in and says, well, that's mine. I, I did that. That's mine. They had that personal ownership, which translates into better decoration detailing. Detail that's sure to bring to life the Pine Wind Garden for the millions watching on New Year's Day. For Torn City Cable, I'm Colleen Farrell. Thanks, Colleen. If you'd like to purchase a rose vial or volunteer to decorate this year's float, visit torrentrosefloat.org. Usually throwing things during an ice hockey game is not allowed, but thanks to Loyola Marymount University's ice hockey team, Lions fans have the chance to do just that, all to give back to the local community. LMU's ice hockey team went head-to-head -head with their longtime rival, Long Beach State University, for its Christmas hockey game at Skating Edge Ice Arena. But the game was much more, as for every goal scored, spectators participated in the teddy toss and threw stuffed animals on the ice, which would be given to children at local hospitals. The players also wore special annual Christmas game jerseys that were auctioned off. All the proceeds of the jersey sales benefited Torrance organization Rich, Richstone Family Center. Their mission is to treat and prevent child abuse, trauma, strengthen and educate families. It also works to prevent violence in families and the communities. Team staff says the event was created to not only give back, but to also bring their families and friends together for the holiday season. It's so easy to get distracted during the holiday season, and so we thought we have a great Christmas holiday game. It's our only game in December every year we throw this game, and it's just a great way to, you know, take a second, and, and you're coming to enjoy hockey, but you can give back at the same time, and it's an easy way to give back to the community and to kids who are in need during the holiday season. This year, fans broke the record with 301 stuffed animals collected, tripling their previous record. $450 raised from the jerseys with a number of the LMU hockey players from the South Bay. One of the coaches, Chris Rhodes, is also a fire prevention specialist for the Torrance Fire Department. He says the event also shows off the sport of hockey in the South Bay. The ties to the city of Torrance is a lot of these kids grew up here in the South Bay. It's a great opportunity to not only get a high quality education, but to play a sport that is uh, extremely, extremely worldwide well known. So. Tonight is the teddy bear toss and it goes to uh, children's, ho it goes to like hospitals to make children's ha children, children happy so it doesn't feel like they're alone and stuff. So and when MLU s scores their first goal, you throw it over the boards. My favorite part of today's event is um, giving is giving the stuffed animals to the kids who need it because I have stuffed animals at home that makes me happy and you know I think they should have stuffed animals that that should make them happy when they're in the hospital. 
Teddy bear toss is a popular Christmas season tradition at many hockey games. LMU won the game by beating the 49ers 9-3. A local park turned into one of the best places to shop recently for the holidays. The city's 37th annual Christmas boutique brought out 85 vendors to Wilson Park. Majority of the vendors were arts and crafts experts and sold one-of-a-kind handcrafted items. Some types of items customers were able to purchase included Christmas decorations, apparel, jewelry, body care, to sports accessories. The boutique is annually sponsored by the Torrance Youth Council, an advisory body to City Council on matters pertaining to youth in the city. It is comprised of two members representing each of the Torrance High Schools, El Camino College, California Academy of Math and Science. The holiday event raised nearly $5,000 this year to donate to community youth projects and their Beat the Odds scholarship program, which takes place every first Thursday in May. The Youth Council provides up to six scholarships per year to Torrance Unified School District students who have beaten the odds and maintained their grades as well as doing some form of community service. There were also some uh, photos with Santa and a booth for children to make holiday crafts. An organization that continues to raise awareness against the dangers of street racing brought families of victims together for a night of remembrance. Families gathered to remember their loved ones while also making sure their voices were heard by sharing their loss to street racing. Local council members were also in attendance along with officers from various agencies. In 2018, 670 lives were lost to traffic fatalities out of 42,000 traffic collisions. Traffic accidents are the number one killer for youth in Los Angeles and across the country. Founder of the organization Liliana Trujillo planned the event for December 7th, the day she lost her daughter Valentina to street racing. We have so many people helping us with this program and we're going to just take it everywhere. And of course the core of my organization will be street racing and bringing that awareness and helping these kids so it doesn't happen to them. The street racing task forces that are out there in LAPD, CHP, these, they're all over the place right now. They're taking care of the bad guys over there. And we take care of mentoring the youth and educating the youth. He had five days in the fifth grade and he didn't get to live the rest of his life. And, you know, I just want people to know the dangers of street racing and driving recklessly. Thanks to Trujillo's efforts, other families who faced the same tragedy as her came to keep their loved one's memories alive and to speak out against street racing. Many people hope laws will become stricter as many times street racing incidents are considered misdemeanors and drivers are arrested only for a short time. As a way to remember the lives that have been lost, families released butterflies. Today I'm here for Bethany. I promised her when we buried her, that I would keep her memory alive. Bethany was a mother, a sister, a daughter, a niece, and a good friend to many. She was adventurous. She enjoyed trying new things, visiting new places, and traveling. Streets are for Everyone founder Damien Kevitt spoke to attendees about his near-death experience after biking in Griffith Park. The organization improves the quality of life for pedestrians, bicyclists, and drivers alike by reducing traffic cost fatalities to zero. So we're here to not only remember those who have lost their lives or have been impacted by traffic collisions in one way or another through losing the lives of a loved one or personally. We make upwards of 50 arrests probably a year for street racing. Uh, a lot of ours are citations for spectating, um, for a lot of DUI arrests come out of that as well. To learn more, head to streetracingkills.org. A local business celebrated with the Torch community for a special occasion. Trend Trend State Farm, located on the corner of Crenshaw and Delamo Boulevards, gave back by hosting a holiday open house to celebrate their two-year anniversary. In partnership with the Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce, they hosted a celebratory ribbon-cutting. Owner Trend 
says State Farm offers insurance and financial services. They served attendees tacos and micheladas along with live music. They also had a photo booth to bring in the festive season. Friend says that day was a proud moment. As a uh, war refugee from the Vietnam War, so I never really thought that I'd be able to do something like this all on my own, but here I am, female business owner, doing it, doing it well, and happy and proud today. The office is open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. A 15-day showcase of culinary flavors in Los Angeles is coming up. You can now make reservations for the upcoming Dine LA Restaurant Week that takes place twice a year. It highlights the diversity of culinary experiences LA County has to offer. Two restaurants in Torrance are also participating, including Gayukaku and Madre Oaxacan Restaurant. They are offering lunch and dinner specials with prices for dinner at $39. Madre's lunch menu is online and it offers a choice of appetizer, lunch, entree and dessert. There are more than 400 restaurants taking part. While reservations are urged, you can always stop by a participating restaurant and ask for the Dine LA Restaurant Week menu. For more information, head to discoverlosangeles.com slash Dine LA. Restaurant Week kicks off January 17th and runs through the 31st. The use of e-cigarettes known as vaping is now the most prevalent substance abuse trend impacting teens. The Torrance Unified School District is hosting a series of town hall events to educate parents and students of the dangers of vaping. Torrance City Cable reporter Colleen Farrell was at North High School and has this report. At first glance, Alex Gray appears to lead a charmed life. As a 10-year-old growing up in Palos Verdes, his older brother Chris introduced him to surfing on Torrance beaches. And I've done a lot of traveling since and I can still say I think it is the worst wave in the world. Thanks to supportive parents, he took his dream to the top. He became a world champion surfer. But just as he was hitting his stride at age 17, his brother Chris hit rock bottom. After kicking a heroin habit through rehab, he decided to try the highly addictive drug one more time. Chris made, made, a, made a terrible choice, and it was a mistake, an accident, with the consequence that took his life. Two decades later, the Torrance resident is telling Chris's story to South Bay teens. He tackled the topic of electronic cigarette use, also known as vaping, at a Torrance Unified School District town hall meeting for parents and students at North High School. While vaping may appear safer than heroin, it's just as addictive and possibly as dangerous. The additive vitamin E acetate used in vaping products is proving harmful, with more than 2,000 lung injuries and 49 deaths in recent months. Here in California, the number of high schoolers who vape is 23 percent higher than the national average. Health experts are hoping to curb that number through events like this one. We know that the brain is not fully developed until you're 25. And so for someone who starts smoking and using nicotine younger than that, they're essentially rewiring their brain and becoming addicted a lot sooner. And so essentially creating lifelong users. A panel of education, mental and medical health professionals and a student highlighted what parents are up against. Easy access to purchasing vaping devices online and in smoke shops, and an industry that makes it easy for kids to hide devices that look like Nintendo controllers, phone chargers, even the drawstrings of a hoodie. Kids are also being lured by enticing ads and more than 18,000 vaping flavors such as Skittles, cotton candy, and Captain Crunch, some of which contain cancer-causing chemicals push kids to not need every friend in the world, but to have a handful of friends that are there when it's the bad day. Alex is hoping to reach teens with the message, there is no quick fix in life. There's so many things in life that we can avoid if we simply have the courage and guts to be ourselves. And few are better qualified to demonstrate that riding the wave of adversity is the ticket to success. For Torrance City Cable, I'm Colleen Farrell.
Thanks, Colleen. The Torrance Unified School District will host two more vaping town hall events on the following dates, February 5th at West High School and March 18th at Torrance High. As holiday shopping is underway, make sure to be cautious when you're making purchases. California is the state with the largest number of reported identity theft incidents and the third highest rate of ID theft crime per capita, according to the Federal Trade Commission. Now, prevent, to prevent theft of your credit card or other personal information over the holidays, the Auto Club recommends to shop on familiar websites that you know are secure. Beware of fake gift cards offered through websites or third parties if you are planning to purchase one by directly from retailers. Also be wary of who you accept an e-card from. Cyber criminals can load e-card links or attachments with viruses and malware that download to your computer. Be careful of the Wi-Fi you are using and know where your credit cards are at all times. Also, if you plan to give back, make sure charity, that charity you are donating to, is legitimate. And now let's check in with Leslie Robbins on what's new and exciting in local sports. Hey, Leslie, what do you have for us? What's up, Jin and Ben? Coming up on the sports desk, South football is now state bound. See how it all went down. The state journey for ECC's women's volleyball comes to an end, plus girls water polo and wrestling are what's up all of that plus so much more be sure to watch every day at 4 and 9 30 back to you in the studio thanks leslie well that does it for us on this week in torrance i'm jen chun and i'm ben mccain thanks so much for joining us we'll see you next time